were pressed to come up with a one-word summation of the San Diego Chargers season of 73, disaster would do quite nicely. The Chargers spent the year slightly out of sync, trailing one step behind the rest of the league. On every side, potential success did an about face and turned to failure. Yes, 73 was bad news, but sometimes in looking back on our misfortune, it's healthier to laugh than cry. And after all, the season did have its moments of humor. In fact, 1973 produced some strange behavior on all sides, as the Chargers and their opponents played Can You Top This? No one was safe as Chargers and opponents alike looked on in amazement at some of the strangest activities in pro football history. When the ball was finally put into play, 73 skidoo. I'm Dick Butkus. You know who I am and what I do. But I want to talk to you about something else besides football right now. I want to talk to you about the Army's new two-year enlistment option and what it means to you. Because you're the one who can get the most out of it. The deal is this. Instead of the usual three or four years, you can now sign up for just two years in today's Army and still have a choice. You can pick the job trading you want, or you can even serve in Europe. Now, any middle linebacker worth his lumps can read that option. It says, go for two in today's Army. Why not talk it over with your Army representative? He's listed in the yellow pages under recruiting, or call this number toll-free. Nineteen seventy-three was not all tragedy and farce, however. 
There were genuine moments of blue sky that broke through the overcast. Only a true pessimist would choose to ignore them completely. Rising above defeat is not always easy, but there were some impressive single game performances, such as Mike Garrett's day in the mud against Cleveland. Even more impressive was the season-long performance by the special teams. Teamwork was the strength of the bomb squads, and it all began up front with the four bulls of the wedge, led by number 70, Russ Washington. Their job was to attack the wedge busters and open a crack for number 48, Ron Smith. Smith has been this route before. He is the leading kick returner in NFL history. Sometimes Smith uses instinct and pure speed. Other times, teamwork and a trick. By shifting suddenly to a 10-man front with only Smith off the line of scrimmage, the Chargers hope to confuse blocking patterns. At the snap, the Chargers fake a block to freeze coverage, then everyone peels to the sideline. Smith fields the ball unhindered, then hurries to the wall being formed. The fake punt block worked with playbook precision against the Buffalo Bills. Then the same play caught the New Orleans Saints by surprise. Ron Smith and the special teams led the league in punt returns with unit coordination. In other areas, individuals led the way. Number 79, Coy Bacon, stood out on the defensive line. Bacon is a stopper. And in 74, he will move outside again, from tackle to his original position at end. Hopefully, this move will benefit the overall defense, because in 73, Bacon and his teammates did most of their hitting out of frustration. Sometimes when the Chargers hit their hardest, they still couldn't win. Too often in 73, the Chargers hit too late. While the defense struggled with field position, the offense searched for a winning style. Style is a personal thing, but the Chargers were willing to try anything to change their course. There were the spinners, and there were those who tried it backwards. There was even an unsigned broken field wonder. But the most unusual style belonged to a runaway truck named Robert Holmes. Holmes barges up and down the field with the resiliency of a rubber ball. Holmes ends up in strange positions, but his method is oddly effective. In 1973, Holmes crawled and careened his way to seven touchdowns. A 
living legend provided San Diego with a bit of pro football history in 73. John Unitas changed his immortal number 19 to blue and gold, and early in the season he had his moments. At his best, it seemed that not a day had passed since the glory days of Baltimore. Unitas' career can be put in proper perspective by a milestone he reached and passed as a charger. Against Cincinnati, he threw for his 40,000th yard. But time has changed more than his trademark high tops from black to powder blue. Time takes its toll on a man's body. At 40, Unitas fell prey to the inroads of age. His famous last split-second release now led to pain, injury, and ineffectiveness. The irony of age had caught up with John Unitas. While his mind and instinct for the game were at their peak, his body was now unable to do its part. So he retired to the sidelines to observe a quarterback at the opposite end of that irony. Number 14, Dan Fouts, has a lot to learn about pro football. But his youth can stand up to the toughest pass rush. And what better instructor for the finer points of the game than the master of the drop-back pass? Unitas could instruct, but it was under fire that Fouts learned his lessons best, if somewhat painfully. Some of his failures simply weren't his fault. Others definitely were. But through it all, Fouts gained another needed ingredient, experience. Unitas supplied what he could. Fouts was an eager pupil and experience tied it all together to produce some impressive results. He showed he could ride the ball 40 yards on a line. He learned there were also times to use a softer touch. And sometimes it seemed best to just fire away. Actually, Dan Fouts' rookie season was not all glory and glamour. To tell the truth, he didn't set pro football on its ear, but he did show promise. You don't build an overnight contender in the NFL with one rookie quarterback. But the promise of Dan Fouts is very important because it's with youth and potential that the San Diego Chargers will begin building back from 73 skidoo. The road back will be difficult and the journey may take time, but there are already people in San Diego who can help make a start. A healthy Sid Edwards for one. Despite missing much of 73 with injuries, Edwards still led the Chargers in rushing. Also returning from injury will be a proven pro, Gary Garrison. Another Charger plus is the offensive line. Most often their work goes unnoticed, but the success or failure of any play begins with the control at the line of scrimmage. In 1973, the Chargers most valuable player was an offensive lineman. Number 70, Russ Washington. With Washington, Doug Wilkerson, and Terry Owens, the Chargers have a solid nucleus in this vital area.
Here are some building blocks with which to begin. But most of the others will be gathered in a hotel ballroom in New York City. The uh, 39th Annual National Football League Selection Meeting is now in session. Here, all teams start out equal. But through trades, the Chargers have gathered more than their share of key draft positions for the future. This advantage has already begun to pay dividends. Chargers, first round selection. Bo Matthews, running back, Colorado. The second man selected in the 74 draft comes from the wild west country of Boulder, Colorado, home of the rampaging Colorado Buffaloes. The toughest buffalo of them all wore number 41, Bad Bo Matthews. Matthews is 230 pounds of mobile power with a nose for the goal line. But he is more than just a runner. Number 41 does something few other college backs can do. He blocks as well as he runs. Matthews is head of the class of 74, a draft which also includes linebacker Don Good, guard Mark Markovich, and quarterback Jesse Freitas of San Diego State. Matthews comes to San Diego as a complete back who can help the Chargers right away. The draft is a good way to start tomorrow, for the face of youth will determine San Diego destiny. I uh, want you to be the first to know. I joined the Army, so I, I guess it means goodbye. Chris, I want you to be the first to know. I joined the Army, so I guess this means goodbye. Oh, wow. Oh. Susie. I want you to be the first to know I've joined the army, so I guess it's goodbye. Goodbye? Ginny, I wanted you to be the first to know. I joined the army, so I guess it's goodbye. No, Linda, I want you to be the first to know I've joined the army, so I guess it means goodbye. Oh, Rod. Alan, uh, I mean, Ellen. With the Army's delayed entry program, you can enlist now and take up to six months to say goodbye. When did you join? Oh, actually, last July. For more information on enlistment options in today's Army, call this number toll-free. One constant of Charger football in good years or bad is the lure of San Diego Stadium. Fall Sundays down in the parking lot, it's the family place to be. A good place to renew old friendships and make new ones. A place to enjoy the fun and food of a tailgate party. While the parking lot fills with the tailgaters, Others enjoy the autumn sunshine and picnic areas on the sides of the stadium. The reason for all the festivities lies just over the rim. It's game day at San Diego Stadium. San Diego has retained a personal touch. Area bands perform, community involvement is stressed. A feeling of pride in our town prevails. Coming down the tunnel, the San Diego Chargers prepare to add the most important ingredient to the sights and sounds of San Diego Stadium. Oh! 
Charger football faces a challenge in 1974. The road back from 73 Skidoo will not be traveled overnight. It will take time, talent, and patience. But Tommy Prothrow is dedicated to that task. There should be no grand illusion. Maybe even a hard and fast timetable is unrealistic, but at least hope has reappeared. What will the coming season bring? Why don't you join me in 74 and we'll find out together.